Hello and welcome back to the channel. So I've been a bit sick lately, uploads have been a bit slower, but nonetheless I still want to keep creating content. And what I really want to look at today is this image right here. You guys remember, I think it was maybe a couple of years ago, there was this blue dress or gold dress phenomenon on the internet. It's like, are they the same dress? What color are you seeing? This is kind of my personal blue dress or gold dress moment. I saw this on this TikTok creator's account. Shout out to Tomia165. Let's think about it. So we're going to be doing a pretty thorough investigation in my eyes into trying to figure out if this is actually the same person, if this is surgically possible. And I'll just tell you right now, this is 100% surgically possible. It's nothing dramatic. She just brought out the best features that complemented her. She improved her facial harmony in, in simple speak. And it's actually doable. And I would actually predict it costs probably something like less than seven to ten thousand dollars right, so before we can bring out the big guns we need to do the hand tooling first you know you've got to use our own eyes to try to spot the differences so we know what to look for the number one thing that points me towards thinking that this is actually the same person is this formation in her hairline right here and you'll see that it's it's more of an s shape some might call it a widow speak i think it's actually a cowlick and basically it's a protuberance of the hair that creates a defined facial framing Essentially, what that means is it makes her face her face. And you, it's not something you would see on a lot of faces. It's definitely not a common hairline feature. So just because of the way her hair pulls up here and, and here it goes to the side, it's not as prominent in the after image, but it's definitely there. And it's not, again, a common facial feature. So this is something that could be a big tell for suggesting these two are the same person. Also, surgically, it's not something you would ever correct because... She has a perfectly fine hairline. She doesn't have any hairline recession. She's not a 40-year-old man. You know, she's not losing her hair. So not something you would correct either. That's why I think this is probably the biggest sign that this is the same person. But obviously, we have to be a bit more thorough than that. So we'll keep looking. Looking at these images individually, there's some other key characteristics we can point out. But firstly, I don't know how many of you might point this out, but you might notice that she's pursing her lips. She's pushing her lips close together and for that reason you can see the activation of the lower lip muscles and also around the chin area the mental labial sulcus and uh, at this region here i can't remember what it's called but basically she's she's doing the hamburger smile if you're not familiar with what that is that, there could be two reasons for that one when people deliberately have to force their lips shut it's sign of an incompetent lip and an incompetent lip is one that doesn't close properly, so you have to really keep it shut by forcing it shut. Normally, your lips should just come at rest at relax, at a relaxed pace. You know, you don't need to push it down like that. In the after images, you'll also notice that her lips are way more relaxed. The mouth corners are averted upwards, so that's you know a sign of just having relaxed, competent lips, lips that close properly like they should, no gaps in the middle. She doesn't have to force them shut is what I'm trying to get at. And that's because the lips are now properly shaped. They're perfectly aligned for the face. And that's why partially what that's why we find lips like this attractive. And that's also why this is the beauty standard, because they're signs of a adequately formed lip that closes without any unnatural issues. So I would refer back to an image like this where you notice that when people really have to keep their lips shut, there's a lot more activation of the lower chin muscles and also in the surrounding lip region as well so some of the more obvious things that i think we can all just go through we will breeze through these really quickly obviously the eyebrows are a completely different shape and i've said this multiple times if you have a softer face then rounder eyebrows are better i think this was in the eyebrow video if you have a more masculine face with more stronger defined features and masculine faces on women isn't necessarily a negative just mind you it, it depends because there are masculine features and then there are masculinized faces what I mean is if you have masculinized features like a strong jawline like this lady has, and mind you, she has a very aesthetically formed jawline, then it's. It, I think the arched eyebrows is actually a better look, something more like this, because it gives more structure to the face, because the face itself is very structured. In the after image, she has basically what I said, and she has those more arched eyebrows. Again, I can't remember the name of this specific type of eyebrow, but there is the chart. You can refer back to the chart. Basically, the eyebrow angle, which is the shape of the inferior part of the eyebrow, is a lot wider. Then you can also see that it just barely touches through. And that's, you know, that's 
Again, these are guidelines, not hard set rules, but I think she matches it very well. And they're also much thicker. And I, I'm not sure if this is a form of makeup or if she just microbladed them to use minoxidil to get them thicker. It could be makeup, it could be natural, but either way, this is the type of eyebrow you'd want. You also notice that the eyebrows are the same color. So again, another point for her being the same person. People generally don't change their eyebrow color unless it's to a slightly darker shade or to a different color altogether because eyebrow colors, like most facial hairs, are linked to facial melanin and it's the one that's usually best suited for your facial coloring and features. But I don't think she's made any changes to her eyelids because in the previous, she's just looking down in the after image, she's just looking towards the camera. But in both the eyelid exposure, the amount of eyelid that's shown is actually very much the same. So it doesn't really make sense to change that. But I do think she might have changed the brow. Regarding the color of the eyes, I mean, they could be context. They might not be. It's hard to tell because of the resolution of the image. One thing to note when you're going from a darker eye color to a lighter one through contacts is that the pupil often has some bleed into the contact itself, meaning that some of the brown is visible in the colored contact because the pupil opening might not match up perfectly with the contacts opening. And so there is some loss of color that essentially is the biggest telltale sign for colored contacts versus regular eye colors. A couple of other things though that make me think that this is not the same person is this point here. Do you see this? This is the, well, the Koreans call it the egg yosal. Uh, I think the Westerners call it the puffy lower eyelid. I think that's what we call it at Kuz, the puffy eye bag. But it's not necessarily an eye bag. Make the distinction that eye bags, as they're showing on screen now, are completely different to this, which is a normal aesthetic feature. One is an age-related feature. The other one is a natural morphology. You know, it's a natural shape of the eye itself. And what's interesting is that she doesn't have this in the before, at least not from this angle. And, and I understand that she's looking down. So that's why I'm not measuring, you know, her eye angles or I'm not taking any angular measurements of her face because she's looking down in the other one, she's looking up. It's it's going to be all over the place. We're comparing apples to tomatoes, but she doesn't have the same eye feature here. She doesn't have that. Also, get this. She also has very thick lower eyelid hairs, eyelashes, just a theory. She doesn't have that in the after. So why is that the case? Well, it's not as dark here. And it could be that she the upper eyelashes with mascara and just left the others on the bottom side down. But that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's really throwing me off here. All right, so now we can do, let's, let's bring out some bigger guns. Let's do some more analytics. One is a symmetry analysis. This is a algorithm that I wrote from a research paper a couple of months ago, basically taking the distance from the iris to different points of the face. What we see here, red meaning it's very divergent, it's very asymmetric, and green meaning it's very symmetric. We see here that there's high asymmetry at the lip and philtrum area. So this general region here is very asymmetric. And then you look at the after image, and this is the complete opposite. It's reversed. And the nose area is asymmetric, and the lip area is very symmetric. What this indicates to me is that she has had a form of a lip lift. And I think now that you look at them side by side, it's very clear she's had i think laurie hill calls this a bullhorn lip lift basically a type of lip lift which has accentuated the philtrum length you know um the general gist is that shorter philtrums are more feminine and they're usually more aesthetic because women tend to have shorter faces in general than men and so by shortening the appearance of the face rather than tall and long which is you know someone like bella hadid who has a tall long and albeit somewhat masculine face, you want a shorter, more feminized face. That is, if that's the type of look you're going for, by shortening the facial features. So notice her lip is now pulled in. The actual visible face, which is this measurement here, or you know this measurement here, is now shortened. And that's the effect you're looking for. Okay, so the last couple of things I want to touch on, obviously there are differences in the nose as well. And I suppose going off the reflection, you can see that there's a slight curvature to the nose that is less apparent in the after image. But again, the symmetry analysis shows that there might be deviations in the nose, which suggests that she might have had a nose job as well. And I think, yeah, actually, I would say she has, she has had a nose job. And one of the telltale signs of this is the pinching of the nasal tip. 
the pronasal. And you can see this because of how the outer wing, so basically once you get a nose job, and I'm showing it from the top down view, the nose starts to look a bit like this. And you can see these are the nose wings. This is your nose tip. This is the other nose wing. Whereas if it's an uncorrected nose, it's more like that. And this is an aesthetic feature that a lot of people want. A lot of people might want that European ski slope nose, which has that sharp, prominent button nose tip, almost as if is what they call it. And to achieve that, you need to have a very clear demarcation or a very clear separation from the nose wings, which is why it's, it's almost like a square shape. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. You can see that square shape as we go from wing, nose, tip, and wing. And here, it's more of a round shape. This could be lighting. It could be a nose job. I would say it's a nose job. Another point is we did a quick facial analysis just using AI. Again, this is going to be free to use very soon. Everyone can do their own facial analysis. What we found was there's differences in the Cupid's bow angle, which if you're not familiar is this part here. There's a couple of degrees of difference. And now that I look at it, it's very clear to see this is definitely a feature of the change in the lips, getting it plumped up, also improving the asymmetries in the lips have certainly, I think, probably made it the most attractive feature of the face because it's the largest improvement. She, If there's anything she changed significantly, it's definitely the lips. And if you look at it very carefully, there are clear changes in the contour of the lip. One is a higher inclination, sorry, one is a higher inclination, one is a lower inclination. The lips are more prominent, especially at the filtrum, and their proportion from upper to lower is far more balanced now. The, what you need to understand about lip augmentation or improving the aesthetics of the lips, it's not just adding filler, it's, it's a complete science and art to it. When you compare the two measurements, there are quite significant differences. And I would associate this because one is looking down, again, one is looking forward. And also the one, the original image is, has a bit of vocal length distortion. She's looking at it very close to the camera, which is easily making her nose look more prominent and larger than it really is. And it's also making her head just look a slightly bit narrower. But other than that, explaining the measurement differences, I would say probably the largest difference is the lower facial height, which is probably because, as I explained, she has 100% changed the length of the filter. And I think hopefully this is painfully apparent to you guys, but it's it's a very positive improvement. And I think whoever, I don't know how she would, she would have done this, whether she knew exactly what she wanted to do or she went to a doctor and just said, make me look better. I think whoever has done this, whether her or the doctor has done a very good job of diagnosing the strong and weak parts of the face and complementing what needs to be done. The very last thing is you'll notice that there are, so some people have said that there's changes to the jaw, but I would argue that there are actually no changes to the jaw. She always had that jawline to begin with. The sharpness of the jaw is just a function of the angle of the camera because the jaw angles are very much the same. The chin is a bit narrower now, and that could be because she has lost some submental fat so in the under chin region by losing that fat it it just makes the jaw look a lot narrower a lot skinnier because women in general have narrower skinnier jaws like this it's just hidden under a bit more fat or just a bit more roundness baby fat softness so many reasons hormonal reasons as well thyroid problems so there's a lot of reasons but most women have a jawline like this they just need to be able to expose it by fixing whatever needs to be fixed so this has been a very long video but i wanted to be thorough get all my thoughts out is this surgically possible? 100%. This wouldn't even, I don't even think this would cost anything more than $10,000. And just some growing up, this could be when she was 16, this could be when she was 24, and she's getting her womanly face as the baby fat drops off. 100% it could be. There are some points that make me think that it might not be her, but the, the cow lick of the hair, that's a pretty strong indicator because it's not something you'd really think about a really good result should look like. You still want to retain characteristics of your face. But to the point that people start questioning that you're a new person, I think it's pretty impressive work by whoever has done this. So, that being said, if you want help analyzing and breaking down your face, finding out where you can improve and accentuate your strong features, then head over to the Coos website and order an analysis from our team of expert doctors and dentitians. As always, I'll catch you in the next one.